Happy Thursday, team. Tomorrow is Friday, and Monday is a bank holiday. Uh, technically, most of us will probably still be working, but hey, it's a bank holiday for those bankers out there. So if you are in, if you're a real estate professional, if you're, whether you're selling new homes or you're a realtor, I think this is going to have some really good data that you guys need to share with your folks, right? Whether you share this presentation or make it your own, that's fine. But there's some really good data in here to show why now is a good time to buy. So it's addressing a lot of the questions we get. So going through this, uh, let me share my screen here so we can all see it. Uh, but here we go. All right. So technically, it is a very good time to buy. However, I will admit rates are up right now. So they, according to freddymac.com, uh, they're saying rates are about 6.32, and that typically has almost about a point associated with it. So rates are up. Here's why. You guys can see the chart. Uh, we set it about two weeks ago. The job reports that came out you know, almost two weeks ago on that Friday, the first Friday of the month, it was, it was a really hot report. It was like $500,000 to $800,000 created. Uh, and that's bad because that's inflationary. So it depends on which report you look at, but ultimately... Um, they said like, you know, 500, 800,000 jobs created. Again, if there's a lot of jobs created, that means that's inflationary. People have money to spend. It's harder to hire. The reality is they change their methodology and how they come up with these numbers. And I don't believe it. We're going to see, uh, I think, some revisions. We'll see how this plays out in the future. But for the moment, I think it's hogwash. However, that's the headline. So it comes out and that hurt the market. You can see just how much rates dropped in the two or three days right after that job reports. Then this week, the inflation data came out. And that's, remember, inflation is the number one enemy of our mortgage-backed securities, right? So yes, the Fed's raising rates, but the number one driver right now is inflation. When inflation goes up, our rates go, go up. And so this chart, remember, down is bad. We like green. We like things going higher. So this is opposite of what you think, but this means higher rates over the last two weeks. So here's why. Um, part of the reason why they think, or not think, but part of the reason why the CPI, consumer price index numbers came out higher is because there were some hot numbers in retail for uh, the month of July. So they were saying that, you know, apparently people were going to the mall. So maybe they're returning some of those Christmas gifts. I don't know. Again, similarly, they too have revised a little bit of how they track their data. So again, we, we shall see if this is sticky, if it stays around, or if this was just a flash in the pan. Because look at that chart, guys, like November and December were lousy. For retail. So you guys can see over there um, on the right, the graph on the right, how just what a contrast the, the most recent reading was compared to the prior two months where they were negative. So you can also see how just, you know, the sales are broken out, dining, autos, furniture, things like that. So all in, again, that's kind of what hurt us. And that's where we are for the, this week for inflation. But here's, here's the bigger picture. Other things besides retail are coming down, right? So egg prices, I've made fun of that many times on this, on these videos. Egg prices like practically doubled apparently uh, during 2022. They've now dropped more than 50% since December. So things like food should hopefully start coming down. We shall see. But here's the big one. I've been saying May 10. Circle May 10 on your calendar. And here's why. Um, part of the CPI numbers, they've now revised it. Again, a lot of revisions going on. But the CPI, it measures inflation. And of the core, I mean, it's strip out food and energy. Why do they strip out food and energy? Because the Fed can't grow more food and the Fed can't like pump more gas, but it can have influence and in all the other stuff. So the core CPI, shelter, meaning housing, whether it's apartments or homes, that is 43%. It used to be 39. So 39 point, I think it was like 39.1. Now it's 43%. This is new because 39 was just like a month or two ago. So guys, check this out, this graph, and it's a little deceiving at first. This, it goes back to January of 2018, and this is every six months, so January to July to January to July, and you guys can see how that pink line, the apartment listing for the rents year over year, year, how much they can dramatically change. Well, notice the blue line, the actual CPI number get reported. There's a delay. So there's a delay, and a lot of this is because when, when rents, you sign that lease, you don't get to see it for 12 more months, right? So I signed a lease last year and it was really, you know, a really expensive lease. Well, nowadays, and everything's coming down, um, the, right, the rates may actually come down, but you don't get to sign it for the next 12 months. So I think in the coming months, you can see that pink line, how much they've declined for the apartment listings year over year. And so you're not going to see that blue line change till about May. So May 10th. So here's what we think is going to happen. We think that the inflation numbers are going to be good for March. So next month. So we'll see, hopefully rates come down a little bit. Unfortunately, let me click to the next slide. Uh, so we do think you guys can see February. So look at February, that's what we just had. 
right? Or January, you know, you replace the January uh, a high number with a low number, and that's good. February, which is the March reading, um, is going to be, you know, kind of a push. But then you guys can start seeing how the numbers are going to be about the same in terms of like what gets replaced. But in March, we think May 10th, which is again, April's reading, we think that's where the shelter cost is really going to come in and show that things are coming down. That's where we think, again, we should have a really good Q2 in terms of rates. I've been saying it. We'll see if I'm right. I could very well be wrong. Rates could be the mid fives, maybe even low fives. Time will tell. So here's one more thing I'm just throwing out there because I was curious. So I looked it up and it looks like the NASDAQ has had a good run, about 17 to 20 percent run since the beginning of this year. But check out the all time highs back here, you know, back in and I, I must have cut off the uh, uh, the dates for you guys. But November of 2021 and then in January, rates start going up. NASDAQ starts getting beat up. Why the NASDAQ? Because it's really tech heavy. You know, so tech companies, they're always, you know, spending money, they lose money, but the companies have a lot of growth potential. But when inflation comes, that hurts them. So I'll be very curious, me personally, uh, just curious to see what happens as inflation. You guys can see as soon as inflation starts to peak, like we said it would in November of last year, soon thereafter, you see the, the NASDAQ, you know, take off. So I'm not offering any stock advice. I'm just going to be very curious what happens. And I'm going to be watching for next month in March when inflation should be good. April, we don't think it'll be good inflation report. And then May and beyond, we think good things. So I'd be curious to see if the NASDAQ bounces back and follows that. Um, this, I just thought was interesting. This is the number of mortgage people <laughs> in the industry, and it's been coming down. So as the industry slows, banks and mortgage companies have been letting folks off. I just had no idea there were this many people in the and the, the mortgage business. So there you go. We're down 15% in people. Truthfully, that probably seems light just based on the fact that, you know, a lot of refi shops are out there. Here's another mortgage change, guys. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. This is industry-wide. This isn't Homebridge. This isn't Mark. This is industry-wide. They are now going to hit folks when their DTI, that's the bottom line, the bottom graph there. When these debt ratios go over 40%, they're going to basically start hitting the rate by about three-eighths to a quarter in price. So that can be 0.1 to 0.2 higher in rate. So it's just, it's coming. We've had to go through and look at our current pipeline, um, sort of making sure we're protected. And we, we, you know, appropriately address that. But just FYI, borrowers who now have a higher DTI ratio are going to have a higher interest rate, which by the way, just makes the DTI even higher. So uh, just keep that, in keep that in mind as we move forward. Um, home prices, here's the chart. I think you guys, if you're in the real estate community, really need to, or not a chart, but just a graph. So overall, which was interesting, home prices annually, nationwide, year over year, were up 6.9%. So for every one of you that has a buyer that said, oh, I'm going to wait for housing prices to drop or whatever it may be, 7% appreciation. So think about that. A $400,000 home today, or I guess last year, one year later, guys, I don't know what that exact math works out to be, but 7%, call it, yeah, I don't know, 30 was it $35,000 of appreciation? Like that's real money. So people that are waiting for houses prices to drop, I, I don't think that's happening. So we're gonna see. Um, here's the other thing. This is from WFAA, local, right? So apparently DFW ranks on the number two, I don't know who Knox is, but the Knox list of top 10 markets with the largest increase in the number of homes for sale. So like inventory hitting the ground. That's a good thing, guys, there's a shortage. So they're thinking that the peak is going to come in October, uh, but overall they do think the median sales price of 375 is expected to grow to 6.3% in 2023. So in other words, homes are continuing to get more expensive. So your buyers that are waiting, I don't care what rates are today, you can always refinance later, get in the home today before the 7% increase or 6.3%. So really pound that home. We've been saying it. I don't think people believe us. At least now we got some third parties that are coming on board and saying, hey, we agree with you. So there's still a shortage of housing supply. It's just a fact. All right. So for the fun last slide, guys, and I really, this is on my bucket list. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but it'd be fun. So apparently in 2015, Microsoft built the Guinness Book of World Record for the quietest place on earth. The quietest place on earth. Think about it. So supposedly, Nobody can stay in the room for more than an hour. After a few minutes, you start to hear your heartbeat. I would love to hear the voices in my head start talking. Uh, that would just be wild. I'd love to go to the quietest place on earth and just see if I can last an hour. I don't know if that's just a 
hyperbole or if it's real, but it's still fun to think about no matter what. So what's not the quietest place on earth is our phones. We've seen activity pick up wildly since January and February. So that is good news. Um, the phones are starting to ring again back to, you know, quote, normal levels. So that's good. But I think we're having a great spring season. If you guys need us for any reason, as always, give us a shout. And, uh, oh, man, I forgot a slide. Here, I got Riley. My Riley, you'll kill me. I forgot, guys. Here it is. Get social. I'm sorry. I'm supposed to start plugging this. If you guys would, hop onto our social media stuff and like us, subscribe, follow, all that stuff. If you haven't done it, really help us out. Riley, who's in the background here, who helps me out make these things. She would love that because she's basically got that as her uh, her 2023 goals. So if you guys would, please hop on social media, find us, like us, subscribe. Um, so, you know, that's that's the one thing I forgot. There you go, guys. As always, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have a great week. Uh, find us on Instagram. Just look at Mortgage Mark. You'll probably find us. Talk to you later. Bye.